Hello everybody, this is Pastor Green. We're doing another Bible study, 1 Kings chapter 20. If you'd like me to come speak at your church or if you have any questions, you can email me at g-o-d-s-o-h-m-a-n at gmail.com. So we ended 1 Kings 19 with Elijah and Elisha. As he returned back with him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them, boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen, and gave it to the people, and they did eat. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. So Elijah went and saw Elisha and said, Come follow me. And Elisha said, Let me go tell my family I'm leaving. And then he went and he uh, destroyed his ox so he could basically show you that he was serious and he wanted to follow Elijah. First Kings 20. And Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, gathered all his hosts together. There were thirty and two kings with him, and horses and chariots. And he went up to besiege Samaria, and warred against it. And he sent messengers to Ahab, king of Israel, to the city, and said unto him, Thus say Benadad. So you can see here on the map where Israel is, and Syria is. Thy silver and thy gold is mine, thy wives also and thy children, even the godly thus are mine. And the king of Israel answered and said, My lord, O king, according to thy saying, I am thine, and all that I have. The king of Syria came to Ahab and said, I'm taking everything you got, taking your money, your children, everything. I'm, I'm going to come and I'm going to take everything. And the messengers came again and said, Thus saith Benadad, saying, Although I have said unto thee, saying, Thou hast shall, shall deliver me thy silver and thy gold and thy wives and thy children. Yet I will send my servants unto thee tomorrow about this time. They shall search thine houses, and the houses of thy servants, and it shall be, that whatever is pleasant in thine eyes, they shall put in their hands and take it away. King of Syria told, told the king of Israel, I'm taking everything you got. My servants are going to be there tomorrow. Anything they see that they want, they're going to take and they're going to bring back. And the king of Israel called all the elders of the land and said, Mark, I pray you, and see how this man seeketh mischief, for he sent unto me for my wives and my children, and for the silver, and for the gold, and I denied him not. So Ahab is telling all the elders, all the people that are his advisors. So this guy came down here, he, he sent a messenger and said, I'm taking everything you got, and I pretty much told him that that was fine with him. You can, you can go ahead and do that. And all the elders and all the people said unto him, Hearken not unto him, nor consent. But forever he said to the messengers of Benadad, Tell my lord the king, All that thou didst say of the servant the first time I will do, but this thing I might not do. And the messengers departed and brought him word again. So the elders said, Tell the king it's not going to happen. You're not going to come take our stuff. I know I told you before it was okay, but now I'm saying you can't do it. And Benadad said unto him and said, Thy gods do so unto me, and more also, if the dust of Samaria shall suffice for handfuls of all the people that follow me. The king of Israel answered and said, Tell him, Let not him that girdeth on his harness boast himself that he has put it off. And it came to pass, when Benadad heard this message, he was drinking. And he and the kings of pavilions and said unto the servants, Set yourself in array, and set themselves in array against the city. And behold, there came a prophet unto Ahab, the king of Israel, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Hast thou seen all the great multitude? Behold, I will deliver it into thine hands this day, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. So a prophet came to the king of Israel and said, You know, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna help you out here. You gotta trust in me, you gotta follow me. Do what I say, the Lord's gonna bless you. The Lord wants to help you out. And they have said, By whom? And he said, Thus saith the Lord, even the young men of the princes of the provinces. Then he said, Who shall order the battle? And he answered, Thou. And he numbered the young men to the princes of the providence, and they were two hundred and thirty-two. And after them they numbered all the people, even the children of Israel, being seven thousand. So he said, well, Who's gonna who's gonna make this battle? And he says, You're gonna do it. And numbered all the people, and there was two hundred and thirty-two young men, and there was seven thousand people total. And they went at noon, but Benadad was drinking himself drunk in the pavilion. And he and the kings, the thirty and two kings that helped him, all the young men of the princes of the provinces were out first, and Benadad sent out, and they told him, saying, There are men coming out of Samaria. And he said, What are they come out for peace? Take them alive. 
or did they come out for war to take them alive? So the young man of the princes of the providence came out to the city, and the army which followed them. So he's saying, regardless if they're coming to hurt us or have peaceful, I don't want you to kill them. And he slew every one of his men, and the Syrians fell it. And Israel pursued them, and bid Adad the king of Syria escaped in a horse with a horseman. And the kings of Israel went out and smote the horses and chariots, and slew the Syrians with a great slaughter. And the prophet came to the king of Israel, and said unto him, Go strengthen thyself, and Mark, and see what thou doest, for the return of the year of the king of Syria will come against thee. And the servants of the Lord Syria said unto him, Their gods are gods of the hills. Therefore we are stronger than we are, but let us fight against them with the plains. And they surely shall be stronger that day. And do this thing, take the kings away, and every man of his place and the captains in their rooms. So the king of, Syria, king of Syria said, well, his servants told him, they're really good in the mountains, but they're not very good on flat land. So let's fight them on flat land. Because if you fight them in the mountains, if you fight them in the mountains, they're gonna, we're going to lose. But if you fight them on flat land, we're going to win. And a number of thee the had an army, the army of thou that had lost, horses for a horse, and chariot for a chariot. We will fight them in the plain, and surely we will should be stronger than they. And he hearkened unto their voice and, so, and did so. And he came to pass the return of the year that better dead number of the Syrians, and went up to Apec to fight against Israel. And that's right around this area right here, right between Syria and Israel. And the children of Israel were numbered, and they were all present. And went against them, and the children of Israel pinched before them like two little flocks of kids, but the Syrians fled the country. And there came a man of God, and spoke to the king of Israel, and said, Thus saith the Lord, Because the Syrians have said, The Lord, the God of the hills, he is not the God of the valleys. Therefore I will deliver all this great multitude unto their hand, and they shall know that I am the Lord. And they pitched one over against each other the seven days. And so it was the seventh day the battle was joined, and the children of Israel slew the Syrians, a hundred footmen in one day. That's a hundred thousand. But the rest fled to Apec, and to the city, and there was a wall fell upon twenty and seven thousand of the men that were left. And Benedad fled, and came to the city, and to an inner chamber. But the servants said unto him, Behold now, we have heard the kings of the house of Israel are merciful kings. Let us, I pray thee, put sackcloth on our loins, and ropes upon our heads, and go to the king of Israel, for eventually he will save our lives. So what they did is they basically dressed up like they were poor, and they said, if we go to the king now, he's going to save our lives. And they girded sackcloth on their loins, and put ropes on their heads. And they came to the king of Israel, and said, The servant Benedad saith, I pray thee, let me live. And he said, Is he yet alive? He is my brother. Now the men did diligently observe whether anything would come from him, and did hastily catch it. And they said, Thy brother Benedad, when he said, Go ye, bring him. Then Benedad came forth to him, and caused him to come upon the chariots. And Benedad said unto them, The cities which my father took from thy father I will restore. And thou shalt make streets for thy Damascus, and thy father made in Samaria. Then said Ahab, I will send thee away with this covenant. And he made a covenant with him and sent him away. So the king of Syria knew he lost and said, Okay, I lost, but I'll give you all the stuff that we destroyed back. I'll give you some, some places you can, you can uh, live here, some streets named after you. Deuteronomy 17, it says, For thou will come to the land which the Lord God give thee, and thou shalt possess it, and shall dwell therein, and shall say, I set a king above me, like all the nations that are above me. Thou shalt any wise seek him king over thee, when the Lord thy God shall choose one from among thy brethren, shall shut thou king over thee. Thou mayest not see a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. But he shall not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt to the end of that shall multiply horses. For as much as the Lord say unto you, he shall henceforth return no more that way. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself, that his heart turn away. Neither shall he greatly multiply himself silver and gold. God's telling the people, don't merge with, with the other, other nations or else you're going to fall away from me. And it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall write him a copy of the law in the book, of which that is before the priests and Levites. And it shall be with him, and he shall read there in the days of his life, that he may learn the fear of the Lord his God, to keep all the words of the law, the statutes, and to do them. Exodus 23 says, For mine angel shall go before thee, 
and bring thee into the Amorites, and the Hittites, and the Prevalites, and the Canaanites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their work, but thou shalt utterly overthrow them, and quite break down their images. God's telling the people, I'm going to send somebody in front of you to destroy all these people. I don't want you to marry them. I don't want you to have kids with them. I don't want you to intermingle with them. They're the bad guys. You're the good guys. Let's not do that. Deuteronomy 7 says, When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into thy land, whether thou goest to possess it, and hast cast thy many nations before thee, the Hittites and the Geberites and the Amorites and the Cavites and the Prezodites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, seven great nations and mightier than thou, when the Lord God shall deliver them before thee, they shall smite them and utterly destroy them. They shall make no covenant with them, nor show mercy to them. God saying, Don't make a treaty with these people. Deuteronomy 13 says, Certain men of the children of Bilal are gone out among you, and have withdrawn the inhabitants of their city, saying, Let us go and serve other gods, which ye have not known. Then thou shalt inquire and make search, and ask diligently, and behold, if it be truth, and the thing certain, such an abomination is wrath among you. They shall certainly smite the inhabitants of the city with the edge of the sword, destroying it utterly, and all that is therein, and the cattle therein, and the edge of the sword. He say, don't intermingle with these people. If there's a battle, if there's a fight, you got to utterly destroy them. But the cities of these people, which the Lord thy God does give thee for an inheritance, they shall set alive nothing that is breatheth, but thou shalt utterly destroy them, namely the Hittites and the Amorites and the Canaanites. And the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, the Lord the God has commanded thee. They will teach you not to do after their abominations, which they have done to their gods, which they shall sin against the Lord your God. God's telling these people, don't don't intermingle with them, don't marry them, don't make a treaty with them. And if you guys fight, you have to utterly destroy them. All throughout the Bible, it talks about utterly destroying their enemies. First Kings twenty thirty four. And Benedad said unto him, Thy cities which thy father took from thy father, I will restore. And they shall make streets for thee in Damascus, and thy father made in Samaria. Then said Ahab, I will send thee away with a covenant. So he made a covenant with him, and sent him away. And a certain man of the sons of the prophets said unto his neighbor, In the word of the Lord, Smite me, I pray thee. And the man refused to smite him. God told the king of a told King Ahab, not to make a treaty, not to make a covenant. And that's exactly what he did. And he said unto him, Because thou not obey the voice of the Lord, behold, as soon as thou art departed from me, a lion shall slay thee. And as soon as he was departed from him, a lion found him and slew him. Then he found another man, and said, Smite me, I pray thee. And the man smote him, and in the smiting he wounded him. And the prophet departed, and waited for the Lord, waited for the king by the way, and disguised himself as ashes upon his face. And the king passed by, and he cried unto the king, and said, The servant went out to the midst of the battle, and behold, a man turned aside, and brought him a man to me, and said, Keep this man, for if any means he is missing, let him be by life for his life, or else I shall pray a talent of silver. And as thy servant was busy here and there, he was gone, and the king of Israel said unto him, they shall, So shall thy judgment be. Thyself had decided it. And he hasted and took the ashes away from his face, and the king of Israel discerned him from which he was the prophets. And he said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Because thou hast gone out of thy hand, a man whom I appointed to utter destruction, therefore my life shall go for his life, and thy people for his people. And the king of Israel went to his house, heavy and displeased, and came to Samaria. Exodus 15 says, and he said, If thou diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do what is right in his sight, and will keep an ear to his commandments, and keep his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought out of the Egyptians, for the Lord thy God he healeth thee. He's saying, If you follow God, he's going to protect them, he's going to keep them safe, they're not even going to get sick. Deuteronomy 6 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one, is one Lord, and they shall love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and all thy soul, and all thy might. And with these words I shall command thee this day that shall be in thine heart. And they shall teach them diligently unto the children. And they shall talk with them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest away, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And they shall bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be as frontless between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and of the gates. God saying, no matter what you do, you got to know what I'm saying. you got to follow my words. 
Ahab should have known God said don't make a covenant with the enemy, but he didn't listen. Psalms 119 says, Great peace have they which loveth all, and nothing shall offend them. Joshua 1 says, The book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but shall meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to that that is written within, and thou shalt make the way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. Well, guys, that's the video. I appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions, you can comment below, send me an email. Um, if you think somebody's going to like this, make sure you share it with them. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, click the notification bell, all that fun stuff. On the bottom right of the screen, I'm going to put the First Kings Bible study. Top left, I'm going to have the Exodus Bible study. And then the bottom left is going to be a video YouTube things you're going to like. I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you guys have a great day. See you in the next video.